of Italian publisher and by Annika that is the Association of Italian Producers and Distributors under the auspices of the Ministry for Economic Development. Uh, we started with the panel discussion before. This is the screening of Bertolucci. This is a huge event. It's the US premiere. It's the first time that we have such a big thing in here. Uh, and I think the film is going to have a regular distribution in the fall. Uh, the film that you're about to see is based on um, the book by Nicola Maniti, Me and You. We have a few copies available for sale upstairs at an incredibly discounted price. So if after the movie you're interested in buying a copy, you can do so. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that immediately after the film, uh, there is going to be a um, roundtable discussion uh, that is going to be moderated by Antonio Monda with uh, Mario Giannani, who is the uh, producer of the film, and with Kylie Dust, who is Amaniti's literary agent and translator uh, for English. So enjoy the film, and we'll see you at the end for the Q&A. Thank you. Look, and I went to Nicolò uh, by saying, I have an idea. Uh, he always had in mind to direct a film himself. And I said, I think you wrote the book that is fine to direct as a first time director. Because it's easy in a way, is you know, it's take place basically in, only in the cave, that is only two characters. It looks like quite simple as a first fi feature film to direct. And you know, it was quite intrigued by the idea and we cultivated this idea for a week. Then actually one day on on Thursday, he told me, you know, I, I sent the book to Bernardo because uh, he called me and he, he learned about this book and he knew it was going to be published, so I sent him, but he will never do the film, of course. On Saturday morning, he calls me, Nicola calls me and says, so like Bernardo said that he wants to do the movie out of the book, so what we do <laughs> is a hard choice. Um, <laughs> I said, if you, if, you, if you decide to direct this film, you always have it back in your mind that it could have been done by Bernardo Bertolucci, so I think you have to keep it, <laughs> we have to give it to him. And so that's how, how all this thing started. Actually, Bernardo was in New York, so he read the book flying from Rome to New York. Kyle, tell me about your <coughs> involvement in this, in this well, project. Well, actually, <laughs> I sort of work behind the scenes more than anything. <laughs> Just saying, give him a call, what should I do? Nicolo rang me up and said, Mario, I had lunch with Mario and he said, you should do the film yourself. You should direct the film yourself. I don't think he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> and so it's more sort of a sounding board more than anything in this situation because Nicolo is very aware of what's happening around him and he's a very good negotiator too. And so it's, he's more powerful. I mean, I just sort of work as a sounding board and say, oh yeah. And one day Nicolò will say to me, I think that's a stupid idea. And then the next day, oh yeah, I might direct it myself. And then a day after, no, nah, I'm going to give it to Bertolucci. So, What did you like about the book? Um, um, first of all, I, I, I was moved. I was moved at the book. But I read the book. I mean, you can read this book in, in a few hours. Show it again. Yeah. 116 pages. Yeah, and, and actually, you do, you normally you can read book in one or two times in one or two th days. Uh, this book is e easy to read in one, in one shot. <laughs> and I was moved. I think Nicola has a great talent in telling coming to age uh, character. And... And I think these adolescents um, 
look very much like all adolescents as I my, myself felt when I was at this age. And the idea of, you know, digging myself into a cave for a week, I think, um, is something that I felt so close to me and I, uh, and I never, see, I never saw it actually on screen. So I, I, I thought it was uh, immediately, I think it was a great idea. And how did you work with Nicolò on the, on the script and eventually the translation? Um, I actually work simply with Nicolò on the book. Oh, not on the, yeah. Yeah, so for example, he, he told me about this story about two years before he actually wrote it, saying, oh, I think I'm writing, I'll write this novel. And he'd already written a short story about the mother. So he was thinking, he'd been thinking about her for years and he, he let me read the short story and said, what do you think? And I said, yeah, it, sounds in, it looks interesting. So he, he kept on writing. Then after a year, he gave me more to read and he completely removed the mother from the story as a, as a narrator and he just left the young boy. And um, in... In the first version that he sent me, the young boy was actually in love with the girl in his class. And um, and then, like, next when he sent me, he completely removed the girl that the young boy was in love with and decided that the young boy was too asocial to actually be in love with a young girl. So I just sort of keep... Re it's always more of a sounding board relationship. And then once he gets to the screenplay, it's all to do with the producer and the director. There's already enough people with their oars in the water, as you can say. Tell me something about the production. Uh, the film was shot in Rome. Yeah. How many weeks, and how did you work with Bertolucci? Uh, yeah, first of all, as, as you most of you know, Bertolucci is in a wheelchair, so uh, he didn't know, actually, if he was uh, able again to shoot a film. And that was quite moving to see such a master uh, uh, not being sure, uh, don't feel safe in what has been his work for the last f mainly 50 years because he started very young. He was started his first film when he was 21, 20, I think. 21, yeah. 21, like on Mare Secca, written by Pasolini. Yeah, exactly. So now he's, he's 71 when he was decided to turn his film. So, um, I, again, that was he felt it was his first time again, and that was very moving. Um, all our job was to make the easiest possible to shoot this film. Um, so we found um, next to his apartment in Trastevere in Rome, um, a place that normally where a very well-known painter is working. And we went to this very well-known painter um, and we said we need your place for, <laughs> for two months because um, it's really 15 meters away from from Bernardo's apartment uh, and he could go alone with his wheelchair so he could um, and the idea that this is an art place was social also very interesting for him It's a place in, in some way inspired already um, and so we, after a tough negotiation, we managed to, um, to convince this painter to move away from <laughs> his lab for a month. Uh, we decided to build this, in, in this cave, doesn't exist of course, we use it as, um, as, 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 as a theater. And so we completely rebuilt the cave inside and he, d he decided to work with the same um, production designer that made the dreamers that actually he was at the time we started the film uh, work in Canada with the Cirque du Soleil yes <laughs> so he's for his pass from the Cirque du Soleil to the cave I said must be <laughs> quite a different um, why don't we start with question from the audience yes please No, of course not. No, um, again, um, Bernardo was looking for inspirations. So he had in mind from the very first moment he wanted to do this film that he wanted to have first time actors playing in it. 
Before that, he cast, I think, all women between 20 to 40, <laughs> uh, all the actresses in Italy. So we had you know, f four or five months casting. And all the actresses came, and it was very funny because at the office they see and they sat next to each other. One was 20 and they were almost 40, and they say, are we here for the same role? And Bernardo just said, I want to see all. I haven't done a film in 10 years, so I want to see all actors from <laughs> just to have a look how they, how they turn, how they look like, you know. But he knew from the very first moment that none of them would have been in the film. Um, so he was looking for something, and, and, and after five months, the casting directors came up with this girl. That she's a photographer, actually, in her life. And she's from Sicily, so she has an accent. She has a very strong accent. And if you, if you are the one who you speak Italian, understand that she has a very strong accent. Um, and and Bernardo fell in love with these with these pictures. And the pictures we see in the film are and the real picture from yeah, the real picture. Yeah, she was not a photographer, and then she became a photographer. So he was looking for someone who would profoundly inspire him. So he cast first the pictures she shot, and then she cast he cast her. <laughs> And, and now how she came about. And the boy, of course, uh, is a f he was 13 at the time, so. Yes, please. Yeah, two things. Um, Bernardo doesn't, Bernardo doesn't, um, he said, um, I fall in love with my characters. I will never kill the characters I fall in love with. So that was his, from the very first moment, his statement. Which means that he didn't fall in love with Marlon Brando in Last Tango in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> he likes women better than... <laughs> um, John Malkovich in Sheltering Sky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's coming old, basically. <laughs> Maybe this, um, or he lied. Or he lied, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Um, we had in, in, in the writing process, we had different finals written and actually the script we went on set with had a, f had a, uh, had a different final. I shouldn't tell you, but you know, in a way you could have think that she, she would not save. You would hope she would be safe, but you were not quite sure. We decided not to shoot the final. So he decided to, 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 to stop the film a scene before the real scene. I mean, when she goes away, she, goes, she was meant to go in another place and take, it, her, take her drug. So she, he decided during the shooting that he didn't, he didn't want to shoot that anymore. So that's it. Impulsive. <laughs> the she's yes, please. Yeah, that was another scene that he didn't shoot. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely it has. Yeah, definitely it has. Maybe I should ask this to Bertolucci, but uh, is the final uh, scene an homage to Foranda Blows? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. It's not a secret that he adores the Nouvelle Vague directors, and in particular Godard and Truffaut. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Interesting. I think if we would have directed a film, the film would have been very different from what you saw. Um, yeah, he wrote the screenplay too, um, but he was very much into, into what Bernardo was looking for. Um, Nicolai is, is really an amazing person. He, he, he took such a distance. I mean, once Bernardo decided to do the movie, he decided it was not his movie anymore. So. Even in the writing process, he was very much listening to what Bernardo was suggesting, what he wanted. So first, I mean, in the very first part of the book, the, the boy is told in a completely different way, told there is much more story of this boy, it's much more imaginative. Um, all things that Bernardo did, was not interested in. He wanted, to get, he, he wanted to get into the cave as soon as possible, basically. While Nicolai is described an old world, um, so I think it would have been a very different film any, anyway, so, yeah. 
In the previous conversation, we discussed about the idea of betrayals in adaptation. Yeah. Do you believe that uh, a good adaptation uh, should somehow betray the original source? Question for both, yeah. of course. It depends on the book. The book that need to be betrayed more than, than uh, others. I, I mentioned before the example of the, uh, the leopard, where Visconti and his screenwriters cut the final two chapters of the book, but somehow they managed to, to, uh, to deliver the same idea of death and decadence. It depends on the book. Yeah. I mean, there's such two different things, writing a, a novel and a film. Uh, some book don't deserve to be betrayed because they were perfectly in the translation to a film. Book deserve to be betrayed because it wouldn't wouldn't work. Anyway, so I I think very much depends on, on, on the book. And like in one of Niccolo's previous novels, which is As God Commands, he wrote again the screenplay, and in the novel there were three main characters, and in the screenplay they cut one character out and so there were only two main characters because otherwise it just was, you w would have wasted too much time in the film. Uh, once Kathleen Shine told me that uh, when uh, her novel, The Love Letter, was adapted into the screen, the producer was uh, Steven Spielberg and the only change that he asked is to change the character of a shrink into a fireman. That's the only thing. <laughs> There are also several references to the Mount Etna, to Catania. Yeah. But they also lock themselves in a in a, lock, in, a, yeah. in a in a place. They lock themselves in that environment, although there's three of them. But you know, in that environment, and there's you know, there's a, sort of other characters, other than the <coughs> characters. But anyhow, but so I wanted to ha ha hear your reaction to that, but also explain to me about the action, how it affects the film. Yeah. Mm. Okay, th she's a very strong accent and we have to change several things in the story because she was not meant to be Sicilian, so we have to justify why she's there, that's clear in Rome, uh, why she's sister to a boy that speaks not with a Sicilian accent, so different things, so we have to add it, all the stuff. The idea was, it didn't, it didn't look for Sicilian specifically, but how she's not an actress, really. Uh, she was not an actress, now she is, but... Um, she tried in the first place to present himself, to introduce herself as Italian speaker, you know, with, with no accent. And she was terrible. She was terrible. Um, and so Bernardo really loved her, loved her face, her look, and whatever. I said, well, how can I manage to play? And at a certain point, he, he discovered the, the trick and said, okay, let's go forward, go with your language, speak as you. And, and that's how the accent came out. Yeah. Yes. What, what were they that, um, were in his speaking way, she say, uh, um, the she grandmother said that uh, she brought her to Mount Etna. Yeah, the grandmother, and then he says, you know, I'm not, um, um, you are shame or family because we come from Sicily where we sell shoes, she sells shoes, shoes from Catania. Yeah. So all this. I mean, this is, of course, a question more for Bernardo, but, you know, um, being close to him. I, I think, um, look, again, I've seen in Cannes uh, 10 days ago, The Last Emperor, 25 years afterwards. And that was quite amazing because, again, my memories of Last Emperor is, is a memory of a colossal, okay? There's plenty of people, open place. If you say Last Emperor is, again, <laughs> about people locked in places, uh, of course, last tango in Paris, it is uh, uh, dream. I even the conformist. So I tend to understand that you know Bernardo, <laughs> in all his career, is you know perceiving, perceiving. But the last emperor was quite impressive to me, because 
So I encourage you to see it again. We have time for our last question, Mario. Speaking of betrayal, you probably saw the musical Nan. Yes, I did. The Queen version is completely betrayed. In the <laughs> Venice, he chose Anzio. Yes. And the ending it was a fantastic ending in the musical. Yeah. And it was a dead ending in the film. So betrayal is everywhere. <laughs> There is also a funny moment in the film Nine where he takes a car from Anzio to go back to Rome, and the next thing we see is Positano. Okay, okay, we'll take a, a final question. Yes, please. I don't think um, once. Um, I mean, we t we we speak about Bernardo Bertolucci. So I think the moment he decided to do this book, there is no comparison between the book and 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 there's such two heavy weights in a way. And Bernardo has been inspired by book several times. I'm not asking if the Puy biography is better than the Last Emperor, the film. So I think when such an artist decides to take a book as an inspiration is really just an inspiration and we shouldn't get back into into society whether it was was you know was was which which is better so uh, I, it's difficult to me to to <laughs> to respond to this question i know there will be many ways of doing this many different ways of doing this film but what is important that bertolucci has done has translated this book in in the only possible way that for him, so it's, so he was so sp this this trans this film represents Bernardo uh, more than anything else, and I think this is important for an artist is to um, to make possible get into a book and taking um, and making a, such a personal uh, work of art. And I think he managed to do that. I don't know if it was clear enough. Time to go. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow at 4.30. Yeah.